I will take the liberty of starting off by being a little rude. Uh, I made a little presentation, it's no more than five slides, but it has not been easy to do so because in my opinion, the theme of the session, Simplify, is at loggerheads with the theme of the summit, which is reimagined to re-engineer. Because for the life of me, I don't know what that means. Now, I was not here yesterday, you guys were here. So when all the biggies spoke yesterday, I wonder if anybody cared to elaborate. What does it mean? How can you reimagine without re-engineering? Well, as far as I'm concerned, engineering is a big part of reimagination. And imagination is a big part of engineering. But sometimes what happens in my company happens in your organization. The people who organize things to make it look impressive come up with these big words that mean very little. So assuming that... Uh, okay, that emboldens me now. So, uh, so anyway, as I started preparing, I was told that you must not say anything that is Bajaj Auto specific. Now the Bajaj Auto I walked into 25 years ago was known as a company that made low cost scooters and almost all of which was sold only in this market. The Bajaj Auto that I am part of today 25 years later, I would like to believe is known as a company that makes high tech motorcycles and almost half of which are exported across the world including to the US, to Europe, Japan, etc. So while I will not, uh, while I will say no more about Bajaj Auto, but my management approach at Bajaj has been driven by my two passions for homeopathy and for yoga. So I am going to really go out on a limb here and talk to you about the science of homeopathy and the practice of yoga and more specifically about seven principles I learned, especially from homeopathy, that have helped me do my job better. See, I like to start, since the theme is simplification, what do we need to do as managers? A, we, there is a problem we need to recognize. B, we have to analyze the problem. C, we have to find a solution. And D, we have to implement the solution. It's as simple as that. Now, let me tell you what I believe is the analogy between homeopathy and management. A good homeopath deals with patient symptoms as much as we as managers deal with business failures. That is our uh, meaning of the problem. Both of us make sometimes, as a patient and as a manager, we make the mistake of assuming the problem is because of the outside world. I am sure yesterday you have only talked about Trump, Brexit, Trump and Brexit. Hmm? This is like a patient telling a doctor, I am not well because I have spine flu because of the virus. But the patient does not ask himself why the neighbor or the colleague who is smelling the same air doesn't have the problem. He doesn't realize he has swine flu because his immunity is weak. It has less to do with the virus, it has more to do with his vitality. In the same way, why is it in the aviation sector, a sector which is known to be very difficult, Indigo does so well, for example, and Kingfisher does so badly. I jokingly tell people it is because in Kingfisher there, are, there is no business model, there are only models. But, but, but having said that, the point I am trying to make is we have to look inside before we look outside. Analysis. There is a concept called the three-legged stool with which the homeopath tries to understand the patient because he is not trying to solve the symptom. He is trying to heal the patient. So he looks at his mental emotional condition, he looks at his general condition and then he looks at the specific symptom. We also have to do that as managers. I think too often we take a one-dimensional view. We only look at the customer or only look at the competition or only think about ourselves and forget the marketplace. It doesn't work like this. The solution, the most important thing in homeopathy is to find what is it in that person that makes the person that person who he is. In other words, what does he have in uncommon with others, not what he has in common with others. I think that should be, as Shireen said, the purpose of every business to ask ourselves, what is unique about us? Otherwise, there is no reason for us to exist. So what is that de factor, the differentiator that we bring to the marketplace? And finally, in terms of implementation, the reality is implementation is an ongoing process of improvement. 
in homeopathy it is called pathology how you give one dose after the other to the patient you don't give it mechanically like in allopathy take this for five days three times a day it doesn't work like that you say take one dose come back to me after one week we'll talk again i think it's the same in management you take an initiative or you start something and you review it and you improve it as you go along so to me it made a lot of sense to strike this comparison next please now <clears throat> If management at the end of the day, simplistically speaking, is about an idea and an implementation, here are three principles I'd like to share with you of homeopathy as far as ideas go that I found to be very useful. The first principle and the most important principle is that of individualization. As I said, what makes me who I am is who I am. For example, in Bajaj Auto's case, we are a motorcycle manufacturer. It's not unique to be a motorcycle manufacturer, but we are neither vertically organized as some of our competition is, i.e. brands like BMW, Ducati, KTM, nor are we horizontally organized or in fancier words, we don't have a horizontal architecture like a Honda or Yamaha does with 200 brands out there. We have a diagonal architecture, 10 brands starting with a brand called Boxer we sell in Africa for no more than $350 to the brand KTM we sell in developed markets for as much as 10 times that price. And despite uh, addressing this entire spectrum, we are able to deliver a 22% EBITDA, which is like double the industry standard at the end of the day. So there is something unique, something individualized about our business model that helps us to do that. Which means that an idea that is good for Honda or TVS is no good for me, just as something that is good for Pepsi is no good for Coke or something that's good for Infosys is no good for TCS, especially in recent times. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> this is very, very important. You know, I think often when managers think about ideas, immediately benchmark karo. Dusra admi kya kar hai, dekho. No, no. Benchmarking is to understand what not to do. It is not to understand what to do. The second is holism. Very often we become like five blind men on the elephant. Everybody is talking about a different part of the elephant. It's easier said than done. Let me give you a small example out of Bajaj Auto. Thanks to all our productivity improvements, we found ourselves in a position 10 years back when we had thousands of excess people, labor, who didn't have the skills to make the motorcycles we wanted to make. What do you do with that? As you can imagine, that's a, that's a huge cost to carry in every sense. And everyone said to me that you can't get rid of labor in this country. Everybody knows that very well. You can't fire people. That to a big prominent company like Bajaj, it's out of the question. You'll never get permission. What did we do? We told each person that your take-home salary till day of retirement, we will keep depositing in your bank account, but please go home, play with your grandchildren, let us make the motorcycles. They all took the VRS, they all went home. You know, so if you take a holistic view of a situation, I think every problem can be solved. And the third is vitality. You know, yoga teaches us, especially if you follow the eight petals of yoga, to strengthen our immune system from within. It's like saying if you have an accident and God forbid you break your leg, your first port of call is not going to be to use a walking stick. You are going to do physiotherapy and strengthen yourself. In our case, we made a lot of scooters at one time, but our R&D was a big zero. Don't go and tell my father this, otherwise I'll lose my inheritance. <laughs> but, but this is my opinion anyway. And the answer to not having an R&D doesn't mean you go and sell something cheap. The answer to not having an R&D is not to go and engage a consultant. The answer to uh, not having an R&D is to develop your own capability. And I started long time back in 96 with four young engineers to do that. So individualization, holism and vitality are the three fundamental principles that guide ideation at our company. Next please. Finally, in terms of execution, because ideas have to be executed. You know on the top left there is a picture taken by a photographer of a child almost starving to death. I think it was in Ethiopia and a vulture waiting to make a meal out of that. Imagine, you know, if you were a little upset this morning because your coffee was cold or your car was brushed against by someone else and you are somewhat irritated and if I tried to make light of it, it would irritate you some more. But if I show you this picture, the grief that is there in this picture will completely uh, subsume what you feel within you. In other words, it's a principle of homeopathy that like cures like. Opposites don't cure. Like cures like. So greater grief quells lesser grief. Bajaj Auto, for example, could never export. Till 12, 13 years back, if you look at our balance sheet, you will see our exports were zero. 
Today, as I said earlier, the sun doesn't set on an Indian motorcycle because we export from everywhere from Japan to the West Coast. This happened because we sought to follow the principle of like cures like. First we went to neighboring markets, from there we went to a little more challenging market, etc. And using this approach, we brought ourselves to a position where we can be a global maker. On the top right is a picture of uh, my doing yoga when I had hurt my back. And Guruji Ayangar in Pune told me to stand on my head, in other words, sirsasana. But he told me, in one asana you should find all the asanas. You can stand on your head, which is an inverted pose, you can stretch your legs forward, you can stretch them sideways, you can twist them, you can bend them. You can see that in one thing there is everything. To me, the Pulsar motorcycle was an example of one thing being everything. Because through the Pulsar, we changed everything in the company. The R&D skills, the engineering skills, the production skills, the cost structure, the marketing, the sales, the distribution, the service standards, everything changed. So CEOs are sometimes notorious about, to, you know, they go to a new conference every week and come back with a new idea and confuse people every week with that. You have to stay with one thing, but you don't have to feel insecure. If one thing will do, then what will happen? one thing in that one In homeopathy, it is called all the locals must be present in that global, and the global must be present in all the locals. This is very important, I think, for good implementation. At the bottom left, the story of Hans Christian Andersen, my favorite story, favorite fairy tale of the child. It takes a child sometimes to say that the emperor is naked, which means if the solution, if the idea is right, it will go like a hot knife through butter. Even if you give a small dose, if your idea is not working, i.e., for example, demonetization, don't blame execution. That means your idea itself is wrong. You know? So, in the same way, for example, when we set up our new plants in the last 10 years in Uttarakhand and in Maharashtra, uh, our thought was that girls should work on the assembly line. Now, for you, this may not be a radical concept, but in the auto industry, it's a pretty radical concept. We started 10 years back, and today I'm proud to tell you, last month when Bajaj rolled out its biggest motorcycle ever, a 400cc Dominar, it was rolled off an assembly line that was manned only by girls. So it's an all-girl assembly line that made that. You know? so, if, so if the idea is good, it works. And finally, potentize repetition. Every time you must uh, you know, raise the bar a little bit. You see a whole range of pulsars there from the very first one to the last one. So it's not that you get from one level to the next level in one jump. Everybody knows Rome is not built in a day. We must take those measured steps, as you have done so successfully over the last 20 years. You have taken India to the world like that. We are also trying to do it in our own way. With that, I come to the last slide. So if, if things are simple, then we have less and less to do. And this great man, I don't know how to pronounce his name, he has said, less and less is done until non-action is achieved. When nothing is done, nothing is left undone. Please don't take pictures of this, because I don't know what this means. <laughs> but, but, but you have to end with a very profound slide, so I'm ending with this. <laughs> but uh, actually, actually what, Einstein, what Einstein said is more relevant. If you cannot explain it simply enough, you don't understand it well enough. Thank you very much.